everyone. It's me, Elizabeth, uh, the author of Shockingly Me, the website and the stories. Um, I don't really know if you can author a website. I assume you can. Uh, so today I'm going to do something different, uh, off script and on a whim. So I, I think I've done 10 book reviews thus far. And I only feel it's right that we review something of mine. Uh, specifically on my website, it says that this is the reading corner. So if you're watching it on YouTube, it might not apply. But if you head over to shockinglyme.com and go to reading corner, you'll have videos of book reviews. But it does say that we're going to talk shop about writing. And I thought that we should review some of my work. Um, I have not read, read, I have not read, R-E-A-D, this story that I wrote in quite some time. I wrote it probably in 2000, somewhere between 2010 and 2013. That sounds like a fair assessment. Um, it actually might have been 2008. So somewhere between 2008 and 2010. That's not right either. Hmm. One of those times where details don't matter. It was somewhere between 2008 and 2012. Saw a magazine called Suspense Magazine that I wanted to submit it to. You'll see right there, there's a printed out black and white uh, copy of it. I won. I won a contest. Had no idea I won until a couple of years later, I was working at a law firm as a receptionist and I didn't have anything to do that day and I wanted to read something spooky. And I remembered Suspense Magazine and I saw back through their archives. I went to December because it's one of my favorite months and 13 is one of my favorite numbers. So looked at the December 13 issue and lo and behold, I'm like obsessive compulsive. How funny. I wrote a story with that name once. Holy, that's my name. That's my story. I stood up from my chair, fell because I stood up so hard I hit the desk. When I landed in the chair, I slid off. So I fell twice. Um, so long winded story short, too late, that I would just awkwardly or try not to be so awkward, read the first what fits on the first page of the magazine and we can rip it to shreds together or give it compliments. We'll see how it goes. Uh, like I said, it won a contest, but it was also years and years and years ago. And I would like to think that my writing since 20, 20 I was gonna say 2008. No, that's right, 2008. That's a dumb way to say it, isn't it? To, since 2008 to 2013, or I'm sorry, somewhere in that time period to now in 2021 where we would have improved our writing abilities. So take two. It was still relatively early on Friday night, but one look outside and no one would have thought it was, huh, I can't read. It was still relatively early on Friday night, but one look outside and one would have thought it was deep into the middle of the night. That's how our receptionist felt. Like she was all alone in the dead of night, about to close an office that no one had visited in the past two hours. The thunderstorm had something to do with both the heavy sky and the lack of patience. However, now that the storm had eased up, there was an eerie black light to the midnight sky. It was almost worse knowing that there was some light, but that it was completely inaccessible. She sat down behind the desk, waiting for the second half of her watch to surpass the 12, making it officially 7 p.m. and time to shut down the office. After 10 years of working every shift imaginable, Sophia had developed a system, more like a pattern of closing the office down. First, she'd walk around to the front of the desk and make a right to head down the hallway. She'd finagle the last door on the left just enough so that she could flick the light off and then wedge the door closed again. Then she'd cross the hall to the last room on the right. This door, as well as every other door in the office, was always opened. She'd walk past the whiteboard, erasing the silly messages children scribbled on it throughout the day. 
When she arrived to the next table, Sophia would feel around with her foot until she found the power button. While she was lowering the table, she would stare out the window. On this night, her routine was no different. She watched as the leftover winds from the storm cut through the light radiating from the house. The trees outside of the window were whipping back and forth. Leaves were tangling together and being ripped from their branches. There was a shadow of a creature dancing between the falling debris. What, Sophia thought to herself? That can't be right. There is no one outside. It is only my imagination from this horrible storm that makes me see such incredulous things. Sophia shook her head and cut through the Western bar style swinging doors into the front examining room. She unplugged the gun as the doctor called it and walked around to the foot of the table to the other side where again, she used her foot to find the power button and began lowering the table. It was while the table was taking forever to lower, everyone knew that this table operated slower than the other, that Sophia noticed in her stupid panic, she had left the light on in the second examination room. After she had lowered and unplugged the table, she restored the rest of the room to order. She returned to the second room to shut off the light. She headed back down the hallway and walked into the playroom, the only room she had yet to clean up. Upon entering the room and seeing the mess of toys, stickers, and other messes scattered about, Sophia temporarily forgot about the shadowy figure and her silly heebie-jeebies. So let's talk about this, if you want, or if you're still listening. In the first paragraph, I abuse the word but, just throwing it out there, and not in the butete sense, as I refer to it to my dogs, but I abuse the word but. There's also a lot of redundancies. I mean, okay, maybe not a lot, but like the last sentence, seeing the mess of toys and other messes scattered about. Um, I am gonna cut myself slack though, because I actually talk to myself and you say things like, I'm seeing incredulous things. So I'm gonna let that one rock. I'm gonna let that one slide. Um, but I don't know, I just, I think it's good. I'm amazed that I won a contest based on the first three paragraphs, but I think I'm also um, highly critical of myself. So I don't know. I do know what happens to the rest of the story and I'm, I'm very interested actually to continue reading it when none of you are here, but I think that my writing's improved. I would like to think so. I've grown as a writer. Um, but what's cool about this particular story is, and I don't know how many people out there go to a chiropractor. I love my chiropractor. Shout out to Dr. Eric Santo in Upper Saddle River, New Jersey. Best chiropractor ever. Like, hands down, argue with me all you want. I don't care. It's to each their own. He's my chiropractor. As far as I'm concerned, the man is the best. Um, so unsponsored plug aside, I also used to work there from the time I was 14 uh, throughout high school, college. You can still find me there for the occasional, you know, hello. Um, but I wrote this story in that office. And I remember when I first found out that it was published in a magazine, it won a contest and I had my friends and family read it. Some people were like, what kind of doctor's office is this? You didn't tell me what it was and I need to know, is it a dentist? And it's a chiropractor, uh, spoiler alert, chiropractor's office. Um, though I'm not actually entirely sure that in this story it's pertinent, but it's just interesting that I left that detail out uh, I'm not sure why I did it, but there is a little bit of me in this story. And I think, I don't know, maybe I'm just pontificating to myself now. Um, but I think there's always a little bit of myself in my characterizations or the person I want to be or something that's happened to me. Uh, specifically with this, I remember I had not, that's kind of why I narrowed down the years, because I had not been to work on a Friday night since high school, since I graduated college, like, or I'm sorry, excuse me, since high school or right when I graduated before I went to college um, or maybe like during college break. But I had been working Friday night for some reason. 
and it was so dark outside. And I was like, how did I, you, I said to myself, like, how did I used to leave this office with zero fear, just out into the dark, no lights, no nothing. Cause you know, when you close the office, you shut the lights. So there's no light and it's a quiet street. So that's where this came from. Um, so I guess we're going to review my stuff, but also kind of talk about the craft of writing. And it was that small moment, that insignificant, holy poop balls, Batman. I am terrified of the dark in this office that I've spent most of my life in at this point. And from there, this story was born. Um, and I do know as a writer, um, one thing I've been complimented on by other people is the inner dialogue and our thoughts. So that's super neat. But one thing that I personally feel that I lack or had need, have always needed to improve upon is physical settings. I spend a lot more time, just like real life, in my nougat, in my, you can call it a noggin or you can call it a noodle. I call it a nougat sometimes, um, but I spend a lot of time in my, in my own head. And all I hear in the back of my mind now is RuPaul asking, how is your head? And Ms. Alvisha, Ms. Michelle Visage saying, no complaints. Um, also, unsponsored, great show. Anywho, now I'm really going off on a tangent, but I do spend a lot of time thinking between having an overactive imagination and liking to be creative and write things um, and having my own issues with anxiety or having had experiences without anxiety at different points in my life and just really hunkering down in my brain. Um, so I remember just walking in that office, all the lights going off before I went outside, like, wow, scary dark, not so good. And where I'm looping all this in together is for me, writing about a place that I've been to really helps with my sense of setting. I can describe that office, eyes closed, eyes open, looking at it, you know, looking at you all, I can describe it. Um, I could describe how, what it used to look like when there was no carpet, when there was carpet, when the walls are yellow, when the walls are green. Um, I can tell you the paintings on the walls. I know how it's decorated for the holidays, uh, almost the same every holiday every year. So that really helped with this story of having a physical layout uh, to go on. My last, I mentioned in my last video that I recently moved. Woo! Uh, my condo for my old condo where I used to live, I had to sleep with the light on and a baseball bat and my door locked. I always did the door locked, um, but like locked with like stuff in front of it for two months because I started writing the story and had used my condo as a layout and had scared myself so much that it, not because like I'm a great Stephen King horror writer, uh, just because I used my layout as like, oh, someone's going to break in this door. And so for the rest of the time I spent writing that story, editing that story, decided to submit it. So I worked on it. I literally would be sitting anywhere in my house and like look toward the front door and look toward the front door and being like, someone's going to walk in there because I put the idea in my head. And I also calculated how easy it would be, like how much pressure you need to apply and how you could break into it and like what kind of lock it was and could you pick it? So um, to speak to the craft part of writing, it definitely for someone like me who struggles with setting, writing about somewhere that I'm familiar with is very helpful or using that setting in a story. Downside is if you write scary stuff or about murder or break-ins or things of that nature, don't use your own house. That's my tip of the day. Um, so yeah, I overall think that this is a, I don't want to call it pedestrian because I feel like that's aggressive. Uh, and if I wasn't if it wasn't my story, if it was someone else's story, I probably wouldn't use that word. I feel like this is a pretty basic start to a story. I don't know if it's really compelling. I think there's some interesting snippets in there. 
I think that I could have used stronger language to convey what I was looking for. Um, and I think I probably could have been a little more descriptive in some of, in some of my setting or setting up some of the context to the setting. Um, but we're gonna read one more paragraph. It's like two sentences. We're gonna read one more paragraph. So hopefully it is compelling enough for you guys to read it and then let me know your thoughts and how you feel uh, both about this video slash all the other ones, or if anyone has a book recommendation, because I tried to start reading Gone Girl again, so I could do a book review, and I have to be honest, it's been sitting on the coffee table for about three weeks now, and I think I've only gotten, I got further than the last time I tried to read it. Last time I tried to read it, I got to page like three, maybe page six. This time, I think I'm on chapter two, so shout out to me trying. Um, and that's no shade on the book itself. It's because at the time it was released, I wanted to read the book prior to seeing the movie. The person I was dating at the time insisted that we see it then in that moment. I was like, yeah, but I want to read the book first. And the tickets were purchased. It was uh, one of like the, where you go and you can have a drink and you can eat your food and you can watch a movie. It was an AMC that did that. Um, and the tickets were purchased, even though I said no. And it was cool because like, you know, I got dinner and a drink, but I literally cannot read the book now because I start reading it. And all I see is, I think it was Ben Affleck, Ben Affleck walking around and I know what's going to happen. Um, although fun fact, I actually really enjoyed that story. I love a batshit crazy person. And there are definitely some batshit crazy people in that book. So uh, maybe we'll talk about books compared to movies in another video. Who knows? We'll just make it up on the slide. Anywho, I'm going to stop talking now. I'm going to read you with, we're going to leave you with one last paragraph. And then I will close it down for the night. Um, plus, Maisie's getting real excited about something outside. So maybe I should check that out. Maybe it's a bad guy. Let's hope not. Sophia started by picking up the toys and making a pile with the ones too far destroyed to be saved. She collected all the stickers, wrappers, and chunks of gum and added them to the trash pile. Then she started on the other messes left in pulling piles, lumps, two plopped about. This would not be like, this is a terribly written paragraph. This is a terrible paragraph to leave people on. Let me try reading it one more time. Sophia started by picking up the other toys and making a pile with the ones too far destroyed to be saved. She collected all the stickers, wrappers, and chunks of gum and added them to the trash pile. Then she started on the other messes left in pooling piles, lumps too just plopped about. This would not be like any other night. Well, Maisie stopped barking, so I don't think it was a burglar. Um, and I'm debating on whether or not that paragraph is a good one to stop on. I mean, I'm not going to read anymore because I get real nervous when I have to read out loud, as you can tell. Um, but yeah, this would not be like any other night for Sophia. So I recommend going and reading it and letting me know for yourself how you felt or how you feel. Tell me your feelings, your thoughts, your cares, your concerns. I'm here to listen uh, and read because technically, you know, when you leave a comment, it's reading. But on that note, thank you all so much for listening. Please go check out my short stories. Leave me your comments, your critiques. I only want to get better at what I love doing. I'm also going to leave the link to this story so you can check it out uh, and let me know your feedback on that. If anyone has a book recommendation, I implore you, please send them my way. But otherwise, I hope everyone has a great night and thanks so much for stopping by.